Whereas, let's try that again, see if we got our sound going. Excellent. Sometimes we have a little technical if issues here, but we'll make it work. So, we were talking about you joining us here on this exploration, and we love to hear from you because this is something that scientists do. We work together and we learn together. Because if all the secrets to everything important is stuck inside your head and you share it with no one, that doesn't help anybody. So let's share together. You can join us in doing that by reaching out to us. You can text us your live questions at 562-286-1838. Or you can email us your questions to live at lbaop.org. And my teammate Jen can help answer those questions, field those questions out to me so we can talk about them together. So anytime throughout the program, you're welcome to do that. And we encourage you to do so. But for now, I want you to take a moment because I know you've already been doing what scientists do. One of the most important things scientists do is we make observations. Do you know what that word means? Observe. If I observe something, I'm definitely looking at it. So when we observe something, it's not just going like, yeah, I see a shark. There's a shark back there. It's noticing the details of the shark. Like, ooh, I noticed this shark swimming over here. It's a really long, wiggly tail. Or that shark had a really little mouth. Oh, you're noticing a time change on our webcam. Oh, and some little turtle paddles <laughs> right at the top. We have so many different creatures hanging out in here. And at different times of day, you can see a different view. So that's kind of why you're seeing that color change here. This environment is an outside exhibit here at the aquarium. So it is by things like sunlight so we'll get to two more ah there we go we got a little bit brighter a little bit later in the morning where our sun lights up this lagoon and we can see these amazing creatures so like we were saying just like we were observing that light change in this habitat we're going to be looking at the differences in our creatures look at that cute little smile on this shark right here that beautiful baby is one of our zebra sharks here at the aquarium Quite different than some of the other sharks. Oh, this little friend paddling by right here. <laughs> That's one of our sea turtles. So you're noticing that these creatures, oh, and a foot right above, excellent. You're noticing these creatures all live together here in this amazing habitat. And I'm wondering if you notice anything specifically about where these kind of sharks are living. So we said this is our shark lagoon, but what do you think this exhibit is modeled after? I'm going to step aside for just a second so you can get a better view. Let's see if you notice anything. Ah, yes. My friend Leo just sent us in a message that says he's noticing that coral there. Excellent observation, Leo. So if there's coral here, does that tell us anything about the water? Sure does. Coral can only grow in warmer type waters, but not too warm. Coral doesn't like too warm a water. It likes just right. It's kind of like the Goldilocks, right? Not too hot, not too cold, just right. So these animals here are corals and they like warm water, which tells us if these sharks are living among these corals, what kind of water do you think these sharks prefer? Exactly, these are warm water sharks, tropical type sharks. Now, tropical places are places that can be found around our earth, but only in certain spots. So if this is our earth, whoop, we made a circle. And then we drew a belt around the middle of our planet, like where our waist is. That middle part of the earth would be where we could find coral. And coral's really special because it only grows in those places. If it's too chilly, coral will say, oh no, I'm not interested. And if it's too hot, corals can't live there either. So us as humans being able to keep our water temperature just right is really important for these amazing animals. So now that we know kind of water they're living in and what kind of environment they're living around. I wonder if we can take a closer look at some of these sharks. Let's see if we can look closely at the bodies of one of these sharks. Take a look with me, explorers. Check it out. What is this amazing creature? Any guesses what kind of shark this is? Ooh, we can make guesses based on what the shark looks like. Now, in science, in biology, Scientists often name creatures after what they look like, things on their bodies that they can notice. Now for this creature is a perfect example of that naming strategy. This shark here is called a black tip reef shark. Hmm, let's look a little closer. Do you see any black tips on the fins of this shark? Yeah, it looks kind of like our shark was painting and forgot to wash its fins after. Exactly. Those black tips tell us that this is a special kind of shark that is given that name, a black tip reef shark. There are different kinds of reef sharks, just like you saw, because there's more than one kind on the water, in the water they're swimming around. But let's notice something about this body. What do you 
notice about the shape of this shark's body? If I was a shark, this main part of their body kind of looks to me like I took a circle and I squished it. Do you notice that too? Can you make a circle with your hands and squish it? Yeah. Our shark's body is kind of an ovaly shape. And if you want, you can draw a shark along with me too. Let's see if we can go over to my document cam and draw this shark body. Let's give it a go. Alrighty, my friends. So we said we're squishing a circle. Boom. There's my squish circle. Kind of an oval shape, right? Excellent. Okay. Does that look like a shark yet? No, we're missing some really important things. So if I hold up my shark and we take a close look, I see my oval. Do you see any other shapes on a shark? What kind of shapes can I see on a shark? Ooh, excellent. Jen was just telling me that she's noticing some triangles. Do you notice triangles too? Did you know that a shark's favorite shape is triangles? They have so many on their bodies. Not only do they have that famous triangle fin on the top, they have triangle fins on the sides of their body, back on their belly, way down at their tail, and all the way into their tail. Let's see if we can draw some of those triangles on our shark. Come on over, scientists. All right, we got that big triangle on top. And did you know that this top triangle tells me something about my shark? If my shark has a really tall one, it tells me it's a fast shark. And if it has a really small one, it tells me that's kind of a slower type of a shark. Excellent. Ooh, I'm noticing that we have a question here coming in from Miss Mectic's class, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry. McCulloch, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Miss McCulloch's class. Hi, friends. Welcome. We're so glad you're exploring with us. So, Miss McCulloch's class, we were wondering how many different types of sharks are out there? Let's take a guess. Can you show me on your hands how many different types of sharks there are? Or are your hands not enough? My hands are not enough. Did you know that there's hundreds of different kinds of sharks in our oceans? And we're going to take a look through some different species because although their bodies might be a little bit different, they all have some things in common. So let's finish drawing those triangles and we can explore some more sharks, shall we? Let's do it. All right. We got these fins here that help us with our swimming, right? Because if I was a shark, how do I swim? I wonder if we can take a look at some swimming sharks. See if we can make some observations. We can observe. Remember, that was looking with detail. Okay, I got my triangle on my shark. Let's see if we can explore how they're moving. And feel free to stand your body up for just a second. Stretch a little bit and see if you can put your hands together. Boom. And do some wiggling like my shark. Do you notice what fins are moving? Is my shark swimming like this? Like a chicken flapping? Does it flap like a little bird? No. Is it swimming like this? No, it's definitely not. Most of its body's kind of still when it's swimming. But I'm noticing there's a wiggly part of the shark's body. Do you see it? I see it. That's that tail. So put those arms out again. Wiggle that long tail of that shark. Excellent. We got our beautiful black tip right there. Beautiful. So that's how they swim. Those fins help them kind of steer like a plane. Can you put your front fins out? These kind of help us with turning like an airplane. But an airplane doesn't fly like this, right? No, that would be crazy if it did. But our sharks keep those front fins still to kind of use them for steering and guiding. And they wiggle their bodies, the back half of their body, to help them swim. Notice in these beautiful sharks here, these are some sharks swimming out on the reef. Some more reef sharks. Excellent. Seeing those big, long bodies, that wiggly tail. And I'm noticing their tail's got like two pieces. Do you see those two pieces on their tail? Do you think all sharks have the same tail? Let's see if we can explore a shark that maybe has a little bit different kind of a tail. I wonder. There are some sharks, and I know we have one here at the aquarium, swimming by, perfect timing. Check out this beautiful baby back here. Oh, and one coming by just in the front. Whoa! That's a different looking tail than the other sharks I was seeing. Now, some of these sharks, like this guy over here, I see that two-part tail. I see it over here, too. Look at this two-part tail. Perfect view. Thank you, shark. Perfect timing. And down here, I see that forked tail. 
But with these zebra sharks, I'll step off so you can see. Check out this long, beautiful knife-like tail. Oh, a perfect picture here. These are some of our zebra sharks when they're babies. Look how tiny they are. So you might be wondering, why is it called a zebra shark? Because have you seen a spotted zebra before? I've never seen a spotted zebra. But these amazing sharks get their name because of how they look when they're babies. When they're really, really young. Does this look more like a zebra to you? Yeah, definitely. So these stripes here are really strong when they're babies. But as they get older, their stripes break up into spots like you're starting to see on this little baby. And those spots stretch out over their whole body. And then they end up getting that beautiful spotted pattern like this beautiful one right here. Now notice, this shark also has some interesting ridges on its body. Do you see these here that go all the way back? Now I've actually had the amazing luck of being able to touch one of these beautiful sharks in one of our feedings. And I can tell you, they've got some rough skin. Now feel your skin. Is your skin rough or soft? Hopefully you put some lotion on and you've got some kind of soft skin, right? But if you're, you were a shark, you got some tough skin because sharks, ooh, excellent close-up view here. Check it out. Oh, look at that cute little smile. This is one of our zebra sharks, a close-up on that cute little face. And you might be noticing some things about that face. Do you see some little nostrils there? See those little holes? You see those teeth? Can you show me your teeth? Mm, excellent. Now their teeth might look a little different than other sharks. Do you think all sharks have the same teeth? No, but they do have similar skin. They've all got that rough skin that gives them some protection. But let's get into those teeth now, because we can't have a shark without teeth, right? <coughs> I'm curious. We're looking at a shark here that's got some teeny tiny teeth. I wonder if we can look at a shark that's maybe got some larger teeth. Because when you think of a shark, you might be thinking more of a shark that's got some big, aggressive looking teeth like this. Check it out. This handsome guy here is one of our famous sharks here at the aquarium. This beautiful teacher shark is named Big Guy. And Big Guy was a beautiful shark that lived here because of this amazing smile. Now, Big Guy was also a scientist that did some research for us, which is really cool. Can you believe that there's sharks that do science? That's kind of amazing. This creature was an important part of several research projects, but let's check out this mouth. Now, I want you to take your hands and I want you to open your fingers like a claw. And I want you to make another claw on top. Now, I want you to notice how your hands kind of curve towards, and I'm gonna, on, I'm gonna go on this side so you can see a little better. Okay, so we got our curved claw and our curved claw on top. Do you notice how my fingers are kind of pointing in? Do you think that might be helpful when you're eating? Think about what you might eat. Do you use anything that's got some prongs on it when you're eating food? Like, do you use any tools that maybe have prongs? Yeah, exactly. A fork. So these teeth in here work like little forks because this creature is eating some slippery kind of fish. Now, forks are good for helping us grab things and pull it in, right? So this creature's mouth is actually so big and those teeth are so curvy, he can't even close his mouth. Can you close your mouth? I can close my mouth, but this amazing creature can't because its teeth are so big. Now, this is one kind of shark teeth because these, this shark eats slippery kind of fish. A moment ago, we were talking about that shark with those small teeth that might be eating smaller things. But I wonder, do you think all sharks eat the same thing? Do you think any sharks eat anything bigger? Let's see if we can explore another shark that maybe has a different kind of mouth. Whoa, check it out, scientists. Whoa, what is this creature here? If you were thinking whale shark, you would be correct. This is the largest fish in the ocean. And let's observe this amazing creature doing some swimming. Check out the size of that head. What an enormous body this creature has. And check out those beautiful spots. Some more spots on a shark. So there are lots of polka dotty sharks out there. And this amazing shark here is certainly one of them. And zebra sharks are so amazing because they have a spot just behind their fin up here that's unique. That's unlike any other zebra shark on the planet. I'm sorry, whale shark on the planet. Kind of like how you have fingerprints on your fingers that are unlike any other humans on the planet. 
these creatures have special markings just on this side over here, kind of above that fin area by their gills. And that makes them all, that makes it so that scientists can tell them apart. Why would we want to tell sharks apart? How can we don't go just, yeah, they're all the same? Well, that's because they're not. All sharks, just like all friends in your class, have different personalities. Some sharks are very active, like to run around. Well, they don't run, they swim around. Some sharks are swimming around being active a lot, cruising. Some sharks are called carpet sharks. They're kind of laying and chilling, relaxing. And some sharks are on the move sometimes and kind of resting other times. Check out these little babies here. These are some of our brown banded bamboo sharks. That's a mouthful <laughs> here at the aquarium. Some of our smaller sharks, and these are some of the ones that you can actually touch when you're here. Now, this is a little shark. These guys are only about this big, about three to four feet. So that's a pretty little shark. Any guesses? What do you think we might feed these little sharks? I don't see a bunch of fish swimming around in there. I see a couple. Oh, I see a yellow tang. Excellent. I see some fish swimming around in there, but what would they eat? Feel free to send us in those questions or answers. What do you think a little shark might eat? Hmm, fish, yeah, ooh, maybe some crabs, maybe some clams. And actually, your guesses are correct. We get to feed these amazing little creatures. They eat things like clams. Some of our small sharks even eat things like squid tentacles. And what's really cool is some of them that are really, really tiny, like our swell sharks, they slurp it up like spaghetti or ramen. Have you ever slurped up some pasta? Go ahead and give it a try and eat like a shark. That might have been different than you were thinking for all sharks. Because oftentimes, when people think of sharks, they might be thinking of like a great white shark. Let's see if we can examine that big guy. So oftentimes, when we think shark, we think this big old guy right here. And I love these sharks because of this big old bulldog belly. And they have this big bright smile with a nice beady eye here. So these beautiful sharks are a larger shark. They can be like 20 feet long. Do you think a shark that's 20 feet long is eating the same thing as a shark that's three feet long? No way. Their teeth are much different. Do you notice how this mouth is further back? It's underneath their body. That's because they're searching for food in a little bit different way. Some sharks have their mouth right up in the front and that tells us a little bit about what they're eating. So we gotta put some teeth on our shark we were drawing. So I'm curious, should we put some big teeth on our shark or should we put some little teeth on our shark? Hmm, go ahead and send us in your answers and we'll add in some teeth. All right, it looks like we're going with some big teeth. So I'll put in our mouth and we'll get some big teeth. Boom, so big, they're like big guys. We can't even close them. Now, just a moment ago, we were looking at that beautiful beady eye on our shark. Would you believe that sharks need to use their eyes to hunt? Definitely. That's one of the adaptations on their body. An adaptation is something that they have. Ooh, that's a beautiful eye there too. An adaptation is something on this creature's body that helps them survive. Now, do your eyes help you survive? Definitely, right? We can see things, we can look around, we can read things, we can look for information, we can watch someone do things and learn, learn from them as well. Our eyes are a helpful tool. What about your thumb? Our thumb is a great human adaptation. Can you do anything with your thumb? Let's take a moment. What can you do with a thumb? Oh, excellent. Serena just sent us a message that says she can play video games. Can you play video games with your thumbs? Excellent. We can also hold a pencil or a coloring tool so I can draw. I can hold on to a cup. I can grab things so I can climb. It helps me scoop things up. So thumbs are excellent human adaptations, but do sharks have thumbs? No, they've got different adaptations that help them survive because they don't need thumbs. We do, but they don't need them. So back to these beautiful eyes and those adaptations. Does this eye look the same as that other eye we were looking at a minute ago? No way. These eyes are all different and look at this beautiful shark. Can you believe this is a shark? Look at the mouth on this amazing little creature. This cute little baby is a horned shark and they have these interesting little nostrils mouth up here. And they've got these big ridges over their eyebrows here. And there's that rough skin again. Remember we are looking at that? Excellent. So these eyes help them. Now, different sharks have different vision because some sharks swim in the open ocean. So they got to be able to see a little farther. And some sharks are swimming just kind of close in their habitats. They might not need as good of a vision. 
But if you were a shark, what kind of eyes would you have? Really good vision? Or maybe not as much because I'm using other senses. I'll let you go ahead and decide while I draw my shark eye. Excellent. I'm going to do... There is one shark that has a big kind of googly looking eye. I'm going to do a big kind of googly looking eye. Excellent. Now, take a deep breath. Can a shark do that? They have lungs. Sharks don't have lungs. That's something that we have on land. But sharks do have something on their bodies that help them breathe. Any guesses what that might be? Yeah, Ozzy, you're right. They have gills. And the gills are actually what look like these kind of cuts on the side of their body. And they're not cuts. Don't worry. The shark is no harm here. These little cuts here help let water flow out of their body. They intake water through their mouths and it flows over their gills and it goes out of their body. Because if they just kept taking in water and in water and in water and in water, they would just swell up and get super huge. They wouldn't be able to swim. So those gills help flush water over their body. They're able to pull oxygen out of the water so that they can take breaths of air in a different way than we do. They're able to still get oxygen over those gills. Now, some sharks have to swim all the time in order to keep that flow going. But there's other sharks that don't have to swim all the time. I wonder if we can take a look at one of those. Yep, you got it. This beautiful baby here. Were you noticing my zebra shark kind of laying on the ground sometimes? Yeah, this is one of those in the family of carpet sharks. Now, if you were going to put a carpet anywhere in your house, you would put it on your ceiling, right? On the kitchen table? In the driveway. No, your carpet goes on your floor, right? In your house. So just like your carpet goes on the floor of your house, carpet shark hangs out on the floor a lot. That doesn't mean they're stuck to the floor by any means, but it just means that they have special systems in their bodies. We can actually see one of them right here. This right here behind their eye is called a spherical, and that helps them breathing with their breathing, helps them take water into their bodies, flush it over their lungs, and continue to breathe even though they're not swimming. Excellent. So let's add in some gills to our beautiful shark that we're drawing. Did you know that all sharks have between five and seven gills? But just like we were saying earlier, they're named by what they look like. Now, there is a special shark that has six gills. Any guesses what its name is? Great white shark. That's a great guess. That's not it. Tiger shark. Another great guess. Not it. One more. Let's see. Mm, hammerhead. Oh, I love hammerheads, but that's not it. Are you ready? The name of the shark with six gills is, drum roll, the six-gilled shark. I told you biologists name things by what they look like. Okay, so now we have a quiz for you. Are you ready? There is a shark that has seven gills. Any guesses what the name of that shark is? The seven-gilled shark. Exactly. Scientists, you're picking it up quickly. We love that. Beautiful. So these gills are important on their bodies, help them with breathing, but that's not all the cool tools that sharks have to help them survive. They also have something on their bodies called a lateral line. Now, it's not necessarily a straight line drawn down the edge of their body, but it is really important. Now, let's see if we can take a look at some of our sharks, see if we can try and look for that lateral line. Is this really important? <coughs> now, you may have heard, <coughs> excuse me, Oh, gorgeous. This is one of our horn sharks here. Look how beautiful this interesting shark is. Now, they have these really gorgeous patterns on their body, but the reason they're called a horn shark is this little horn right, boop, right there. And there's one more back here, boop. Did you know that some sharks have battle horns on their bodies? Some sharks even have spikes on their heads. That's pretty amazing. So this is another adaptation, right? Okay, so this is a smaller shark. And because this, because this is a smaller shark, it needs a way to protect itself. There's a lot of big predators in the ocean, right? If you're a little guy, you gotta be able to keep yourself safe. So this amazing shark has developed these incredible little horns here. And those kind of help if a creature was to try and take a bite of this, it might get stuck in the mouth of this giant horn and decide that this creature's not worth it to eat. Excellent. So back to that lateral line. This is something on our sharks. Oh, gorgeous. This is one of our bonnet heads here at the aquarium. Now, a bonnet head is the smallest member of the hammerhead family. Great hammerheads can be pretty long, I believe about 12 to 15 feet. 
And these guys are quite a bit smaller, about five feet, maybe like my height. But this amazing animal has this lateral line that we were talking about. Now it goes from the front of their heads all the way to the side of their body, all the way to their tail. And this is a really amazing sensory system because for this creature, this lateral line is an ability to sense what's going on around it. Now you've probably heard that sharks have good senses for understanding things going on around them. And this is one of those. This helps them understand electricity in the water. Now, let's talk about electricity in the water. What are you talking about? There's not wires and cables in the ocean. And you're right. There's different kinds of electricity. Take a moment, put your hand on your heart. Take a deep breath. Do you feel your heartbeat thumping? Well, that heartbeat is a muscle that's giving off an electric signal. And when you're calm, your heartbeat is pretty stable. But if I asked you to stand up right now, go run outside and do 10 laps and come inside, don't do that. <laughs> Not without your teacher's permission. But if you went and ran outside and you ran as hard as you could at recess and you were playing soccer and you were doing your best and you've been climbing all this stuff. And then I said, put your hand on your heart and feel your heartbeat. Do you think your heart would feel the same? No, you're right. Your heart would be thumping much faster, giving off a stronger signal. Now, creatures that have electroreceptors, and you can say that word too, electroreceptors, the ability to acknowledge or pick up electricity, if they have electroreceptors, they'd be able to notice you in the water. And sharks are kind of lazy hunters. Sometimes people think that sharks are really aggressive, but the truth is sharks are looking for easy meals. And this shark has a, a lateral line on it as well. They've also got some little spots on their noses on this side to help them figure out that stuff too, kind of the little speckles on their noses. But anyhow, sharks are looking for easy meals. So if a creature, do you think a healthy fish swims the same as a hurt fish? So stand up for just a second. Will you swim like a healthy fish? Swimming along. Healthy fish, doing my thing, no problem. Okay, now can you swim like a sick fish? Like, <laughs> oh, 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 we're not swimming the same, are we? Now my super intelligent shark is gonna go, what's easier, to grow my food and harvest my food and go pick it up or to go to the dry <laughs> Seafood, do you want to eat sick and injured fish or do you want to eat healthy fish? I know I want to eat healthy fish, <laughs> definitely. So by sharks going after those creatures in the ocean that are sick or injured, it leaves the populations more healthy. It takes those sicknesses out of the pool and so the other fish can continue on without that sickness. That makes their populations more healthy. And for them like a scientist. I love that. So these are some more examples of some sharks swimming around our reefs, cruising and looking for those sick or injured fish that'll be not only an easy catch for them and a delicious meal, but will also help keep our oceans healthier. So sharks are so important to us and we love that we got a chance to explore with you today some of their different personalities, their different tendencies, definitely their different bodies, as well as some of their different smiles too. We want to thank you for joining us today. I loved getting a chance to explore with you and feel free. If we didn't get a chance to answer your question, you can still send those in to us and we'll get back to you. From all of us here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we want to thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time on our Aquarium Online Academy. Have a great rest of your day, scientists.